Okay. Um, well, this, this is Summer King's Kids group for the most part. And um, so we're doing something a little different this year. Um, it kind of was basically coinciding with last year. And if you had kids in the Summer King's Kids program last year, you remember that we um, actually set aside for all the stuff that the church does and the purpose of the church, the purpose for Sunday school, the purpose for offering, the purpose for tithing, all of those things. So what we did this year was we decided to actually stay along the same lines of that, but we added a little bit to it. We wanted our kids to know who does what in these areas and not just names, but faces with names. So tonight you're going to be able to see each child represents one of you. If you're a leader, you're getting ready to get, you're getting ready to get represented right here. Um, but first I wanna start off by um, letting you guys know who was kind of over your kids this summer. Um, we started with, a, King's Kids summertime is a little bit different. We just keep it pretty small as far as classes, there's two. So the first class, and you guys stand, was, was Miss Jessica and Miss Lindsay. Stand, ta-da! Um, and all the kids will stand with them. Um, but they actually did the three-year-olds all the way through first grade. And it was interesting because Lindsay teaches three and four-year-olds and she came to me in Sunday school and she came to me and said, what do you think about doing the three-year-olds for King's Kids? And I'm like, I don't teach it, so whatever you think, you know? So she decided it was a task that they wanted to take on and, and I think they've really enjoyed it. The kids have done good um, for the most part. I haven't been in their class, but they seem to know the answers to all the questions, so that's good. Um, the second class was second grade all the way through sixth grade, and I usually teach this class, but Miss Ashlyn helped me stand. Ta-da, there she is. All right, she helped me. She's a good sidekick, so we, we conquered this whole group all alone. Um, then after we're out of the way, the best part of all of it is the snacks and games. So this year, Miss Tanya um, and Miss Cindy helped me with snacks. Y'all stand. Ad adults don't ever want to stand. I don't know. Kids will in a minute. And then the best part of it all was games. And Brian has actually helped me for years, but he brought in Katie. I guess he kind of made her. I don't know their date. And so he just kind of told her what to do, but they're actually helping y'all stand. Yeah, stand. There we go. Okay. Now that that's out of the way. Um, so what we wanted to do was tell you guys a little bit about what we learned this year. Um, so y'all just kind of listen. Some of it we may have to repeat so you know what we're saying. But um, we want you guys to have the gist of kind of what these kids have learned. So I'm going to be asking them some questions. We're going to be passing mics a little bit around back and forth. And, um, and then they're going to be giving us some answers. And we're going to see if you can hear them because you guys are going to talk really loud, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. We're going to see. All right. So... For the last 12 weeks, we've been talking about all aspects of the church and who does what, okay? So King's Kids, who is your pastor? Jason. Could you guys hear that in the back? Okay, let's try it one more time. Who is your pastor? Brother Jason. Brother Jason, come on down. Oh, here he comes. Oh, yes. Come on down. Hurry, quickly. Here we go. Just speak. I like pintos and cornbread and red-eyed gravy. You know I love to write. You know I love to write. Stay down here, Brother Jason. So when we were talking about our pastor, we wanted to give some examples of things that we see, that all the church sees that our pastor does. So somebody tell me something that our pastor does that people know that he does. Yes. Praise. He prays. We better hope he prays, right? Okay, somebody tell me something else. Maybe, Ashlyn, can you come in this area right here so these kids can have a chance? Yes. Studies. Studies. That's a good one. Emma. She's coming with the mic. Here she comes. Emma. He preaches. He preaches. Good job. Okay, now somebody tell me some things that we talked about that people don't see that our preacher does. What are some things people don't see that our preacher does? Haley. If the alarm goes off during the night, then he has to come and see what happened. Mm-hmm. He's got to come in the night to fix the alarm. Uh, Sarah. 
someone dies, he has to come to their house. Yeah, he's got to handle all of that if someone passes away, okay? He has to, um, he has to, um, make people feel better when they're sad. Good job. What if somebody comes in? What's that face we talked about sometimes that people come in with? What? Show us that face. Can y'all? The mad face. Who has to help deal with that? Brother Jason. Brother Jason. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Brother Jason. You can go sit down now. Somebody tell me one reason why they love their preacher. Who knows why they love their preacher? Because he give, he lets us do things. <laughs> he does. <laughs> he lets you do things. What were you going to say? Do you have one? No? So, does anybody else over here have a reason why you love your preacher? Okay, Brady. I love going outside. With what? Something about donuts. What? Something about donuts. Something about donuts. <laughs> I don't know. The other day, Brady was in his office twirling the globe, so I'm not sure. Maybe Jason gave him a donut. Okay, Emma. He encourages us. He encourages you. Garrett. He goes crazy. He is kind of crazy. Yeah. One more. Um, Corinne, tell me one. He's our pastor. That's a good reason to love him, because he's your pastor. Okay. Week number two, we talked about music. Why is it important for us to have music. So church, I mean, so King's Kids, tell me, what does music do? It prepares the heart for the preaching. Good job. Okay, so what are some of your favorite songs and tell me why you love them? Nolan. I choose to be a Christian. Say it in the mic. I choose to be a Christian. Why do you like that one? Mm, I don't know. Okay, just like I just it. like it. <laughs> That's good. All right, Emma. You do not owe me. Okay. Do you have a reason why? You just like it? Eli, tell me one. Isn't it amazing? That's a good one. Okay. So then we talked about all the aspects of the music program because we have a big music program here. So we had to put some faces and names behind some of this. Okay. So King's Kids, who leads congregationals? Brother Shannon. Brother Shannon, come on down. Oh, here he comes. Here he comes. Everybody stand and sing with me. Everybody stand and sing with me. Stay up here, Brother Shannon, if you'll just kind of come like right there. There you go. They can't really see. We don't have eyes poked in these papers. So. Okay, so um, Brother Shannon leads the congregationals. Okay, so tell me, who leads the adult choir? Brother Pete. Let's say it louder. Who leads the adult choir? Brother Pete. Brother Pete, come on down. Oh, here he comes. Here comes Brother Pete. Choir, your faces are dead. <laughs> if you sing in the choir, you've heard Pete say that many a times with his hand like this. Okay, y'all slide this way just a little bit, Brother Pete, Brother Shannon. Okay. Who leads the, um, the, the youth choir? Brother Daniel. Brother Daniel, come on down. Come on down, Brother Daniel. Brother Shannon, would you slide over some more? Brother Pete, thank you. Youth choir, come on up. That's Daniel's go-to phrase. Youth choir, come on up. Okay, then uh, who plays the piano? Miss Deborah. Miss Deborah, where are you? Oh, here she comes. Y'all are killing me tonight. <laughs> we, we tend to do that a lot to Miss Deborah. <laughs> All right, thank you, music men and women. Let's give them a hand. <laughs> the next week, we talked about our children's ministries. And because these kids kind of know what happens in children's ministries because they're part of them, this was pretty interesting. This was an interesting week. So, King's Kids, who leads junior church? Brother Sean. Brother Sean, where are you? Come on down, Brother Sean. Brother Sean, come on down. <laughs> oh, you're almost Brother Sean. Not quite yet. <laughs> 
He wants, he wants to be Brother Sean. That's good. Okay, Brother Sean. Listen up, Duke number one. Listen up, Duke number one. <laughs> Just stay right there, Brother Sean, because we've got more people to add. Um, who leads King's Kids? Brother Shane and Miss Shannon. Come on down, Brother Shane and Miss Shannon. Where are y'all? What a, what a blessing. Brother Shane and Miss Shannon. Shane, we need to take all these kids home with us. <laughs> Shannon, no. <laughs> if you know Brother Shane and Miss Shannon, that would be a typical, probably everyday conversation, possibly. Okay, who is over the nursery? Miss Cheryl. Miss Cheryl, where are you at? Oh, here she comes. Sweet little Miss Cheryl. I love babies. <laughs> I love babies. Okay, somebody tell me why the nursery is so important. Why did we talk about the nursery being so important? Garrett. Because it takes away distractions. It takes away distractions. And who gets to listen to the service when the babies are in the nursery? Hey. The, the parents. The parents. So moms and dads like the nursery. Okay, thank you, uh, Children's Ministries. We had a little break with Kids Camp. We came back to week number five and we started talking about people and why we should welcome people into the church. So somebody tell me why we should welcome everyone to church. What do we want to show them? Somebody tell me. What do we want to show everybody in church? Haley. Because we don't know what they've been through. Yeah, but what, that's good. But what do we want to show them? God's what? Love. Love. That's exactly right. We want to show them God's love. Why is it important to be kind to everyone? Because we don't know what? They've been through. We don't know what they've been through. That's right. So then we talked about what is the main purpose of people coming together to worship God? To glorify God. Good job. The next, the same week we talked about worship. Somebody tell me what worship is. Praising God in your own what? Way. Say it loud. Way. Good job. Okay. Why do we worship? Because we want to give what? Somebody tell me. We want to give what? Thanks. Nolan. Glory. Glory and thanks. Good job. Somebody tell me what are some ways of worship? Tell me some ways of worship. Who has one? Running around the church. <laughs> Running around the church. That's a good way of worship. Sarah? Raising your hand. Say it one more time. Raising your hand. Raising your hand. Okay. Um, Nathan? Clapping. Clapping. Good job. Keyshawn? Screaming. Screaming. We got people that do that. Okay. Corinne? Crying. Crying. Eli? Stomping your feet. Stomping your feet. That's a good way to worship. Okay, the next week we talked about people behind the scenes. And we talked about our deacons. Somebody tell me what the deacons do. What's the purpose of a deacon? To help the preacher do what, Emma? Make decisions. Make decisions. So let somebody raise your hand and tell me one of the deacons. Just one of them. Somebody tell me one deacon. Bristol. Shane and Hendricks. Shane Hendricks. Come, come down. What a blessing you are, Shane Hendricks. Somebody tell me another one. Who's another deacon? Um, Nolan. Shane Hatcher. Shane Hatcher. Come on down. Oh, here he comes. He's ready. He was ready at Sean. Hey, can you can you tell us a big amen? Amen. amen. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> okay, somebody tell me another deacon. Who's another deacon? We have two right here. Korean. Robbie Honeycutt. Brother Robbie, where are you at? Here he comes. Sweet little Robbie. 
There he is. Somebody tell me another one. We're missing a few. Who are they? Ruth. Brother Clegg. Brother Clegg, where are you? Oh, there he is. Hey. <laughs> hey, Brother Clegg. All right, somebody tell me another one. Let Sophie answer. Does she have an answer? Say Jason Bennett. Jason Bennett. Jason Bennett. Where are you at, Jason Bennett? Here he comes. We didn't have enough boys to volunteer, so. Sorry, Jason. <laughs> it's your face. Okay, so here's our deacons, okay? Who is the preacher's personal assistant? Brother Daniel. Brother Daniel. Can you give that mic to Nolan, please? Daniel, Daniel, did you get your list done? Uh, I'm working on it now. It's a typical conversation, huh? <laughs> okay. Then um, we talked about who is the financial secretary? Oh, we need to say that again. They couldn't hear us. Who is the financial secretary? Miss Diana. Come on down, Miss Diana. Where's your receipt? <laughs> Where's your receipt? <laughs> who is the who is the church secretary? Miss Let's say it louder. Miss Come on down, Miss Melinda. Y'all are all crazy. <laughs> if y'all had to deal with what Miss Melinda had to deal with, y'all might say that every day too. Y'all are all crazy. Who fixes things when they're broken? Brother Gary. Brother Gary. Where are you at, Brother Gary? Oh, here he comes. Brother Gary, come on. There's a toilet or something that has to be fixed. Put your, put your face up. Oh, he's sideways. Brother Gary. Good job. Okay, who helps advise about the church money? What's one person? Somebody raise your hand. One person that helps make and helps talk about the church money. Bristol. Brother Jason. Brother Jason Mosley. Where are you at? Sorry, Brother Jason Mosley, but... You're a girl too. <laughs> okay, who's the other person? Um, Naomi. Lloyd. Brother Lloyd, where are you at, Brother Lloyd? Come on down. <laughs> oh, right over there. You've got to walk across and show everybody your face. <laughs> Put your face up. Oh, there he is. Brother Lloyd. All right, thank you. Thank you to all of these. That was good. Okay, the next week we had VBS, then we continued with behind the scenes. Who helps turn off the lights and pick up the trash and all that stuff that we don't see? Brother Carlos. Carlos, where are you at, Brother Carlos? Here he comes. Who helps clean the church? Who is it? Everybody say it. Miss Connie. Where you at, Miss Connie? Here she comes. I'm going to pray for these kids putting trash all around. <laughs> yeah. Somebody tell me one person that helps run the soundboard. Corinne. Jason Mosley. Jason Mosley, where are you? Oh, there he is. Somebody, who's another person? Nolan? Brother Howard. Brother Howard. Where are you at, Brother Howard? Where's Brother Howard? Brother, here he comes. <laughs> Brother Howard. Okay. All right, who else helps run the soundboard? Bristol. Brother Anthony. Brother Anthony, where are you at? Oh, here he comes. <laughs> <laughs> Brother Anthony, y'all spread out a little bit so people can see your faces. Brother Anthony, there's one more person who, who works back there. Who is it? Brother Daniel. Brother Daniel, come on down. All right, and everybody tell me who helps put the words on the screens? Brother Howard. 
Brother Daniel puts the words on the screens. We know this. So who puts the words on the screens? Good job. Okay, y'all can go sit down. Thank you. That was good. Okay. Then we talked about church outreach and how we can reach others. Okay. So who works on the website so people all over the country can see the ch can see our church? Harper, do you know who does that? You do tell us. Bobby Howard. Brother Howard. Where are you at, Brother Howard? Come on down. Brother Howard. Jason, that's you. Come on. Here we go. Brother Howard. Okay. Brother Howard helps put all of our stuff online so that people can see it from everywhere. So we talked about even different countries can watch it, right? Okay. Thank you, Brother Howard. You can go sit down. Another thing that we talked about is different languages. Sometimes people can't just speak English. So we have Garrett who's going to come down. And he's going to recite a verse in English, and then he's going to recite it in another language because that's a way of ministry and outreach. Um, Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Je puis tout par qui qui me fortifie pour les biens qu'à tête. I'm like, I don't know if that was real or not, but it sounds good, so. <laughs> okay. Then we talked about a ministry. Miss Ashlyn, you go ahead and come down. I want everybody to stand up. We talked about a ministry that Miss Ashlyn does a lot of with the deaf ministry, with people not being able to hear. So we took it upon ourselves to learn a song in sign language so that we could maybe minister to somebody someday. So we're going to sing it. Maybe you can play it, Jesus Loves Me. Just pick us a key, and we're all going to sing real loud. So if you have your faces, you can put them down for a second and get ready to do your signing, okay? All right, here we go. Sing loud so they can hear you. entire um, summer, we started talking about a couple of really important things. Somebody tell me why it's so important to pray. Why should we pray? Haley. To get closer to God. To get closer to God. Good job. And somebody tell me what it makes you feel like when you know that someone else is praying for you. Happy. It makes you feel happy. That's right. And then we talked about the church having one purpose. So everybody fill in the blanks for me. What is the, what is the church? It is a building where we all come to worship. Good job. And what's the purpose of the church? To be a hospital for the hurting. Good job. So to end our program, the kids wanted to do two songs. We let them choose. So the first one is just the chorus of I choose to be a Christian. And then God's been good. So you guys go ahead and stand. And you got to sing out real loud. I choose to be a Christian, okay?
As the pastor, I want to thank you for viewing our video today. However, if God's dealt with your heart, we do not want to end this video without giving you a chance to be able to accept Jesus Christ as a personal Savior. If you're there today and God's actually dealing with your heart, I want to remind you what the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That means every single one of us has had problems, issues, sin, failures, faults in our past. The great thing is this, is that Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming through the Father but by me. There is a way to be able to have hope, to have eternal security within the Lord Jesus Christ, to be able to know that you're saved by the grace of God. Now the great thing about the Bible is it tells us about the love of God. He says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And that's amazing to a lot of people, and they can quote it. But the beauty of it is this, is the very next verse tells us the purpose of Christ. Because the Bible says, For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, that the world through Him might be saved. That means that God sent His Son to die for those of us who are sinners so that we can have fellowship with God Himself. Now, if you're there today and God's really been dealing with your heart, I want to ask you this question. Do you really believe that God's been dealing with you about salvation? If that's the case today, then I want to tell you what you need to do is repent of your sins. You need to die to yourself. Admit that you are lost and you're on your way to hell. And then look at what the Bible tells us, that He tells us that we can be saved through Christ. Who do you call on? There's only one. As the Bible says, neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It's only through Christ and Christ alone. So I tell you today, would you trust in Christ? I want to ask you, would you, would you trust in Him as a personal Savior? You say, Brother Jason, I don't really know if I can do that. Well, let me tell you, the Bible also tells us that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It don't matter who you are, where you come from, God sent His Son to die for everyone. If you've made this decision today to be able to trust in Christ, to be able to die to yourself, to, to be able to start living for Christ and accept Him as a personal Savior after repenting, would you do us a favor and be able to contact us at 336-788-0551 and let us know about this decision that you made so we can start praying for you. Thank you so much.